Welcome to Econ in HD. My name is Phil. This is Moral Hazard and Adverse Selection. So in this video, we're obviously going to talk about moral hazard and adverse selection. Um, but the term moral hazard is slightly different depending on the field that you're using it in. So we're going to focus mostly on the insurance um, meaning of it. Uh, in investments, it's a little bit different. It's basically a decision that allows someone to increase their risk without increasing the cost associated with that risk. Uh, so if you want to see some, an example of that using numbers and a little bit of math, you can look at another video I posted on my channel called uh, Moral Hazard by the Numbers. So what we're talking about is going to stick strictly into the, sort of in the insurance meaning of the word. Um, but when we're in that world, we also talk about moral hazard and adverse selection sort of at the same time because both of them are a consequence of something called asymmetric information. So, uh, moral hazard, by the end of this, you'll be able to tell that moral hazard is a problem of hidden action, whereas um, adverse selection is a problem of hidden information. So, what is asymmetric information? It's, it sounds really simple, and it is, it is actually. I'm just going to give you a basic example anyway. Uh, so, pretend this is a circle that's perfect, um, and I cut it in half, perfectly in half. Uh, and you'll see that it's symmetric, so both sides are the same. So now we're going to say that it's a circle of information, and we have two players. Uh, so both players have the same information set, so their information is symmetric. So all I have to do is erase one side of it, change it to something that's not the same, and this shape is now asymmetric, and the information they have is asymmetric. So it's basically two parties involved in a situation that don't share the same information set. So let's start with moral hazard, the problem of hidden action. Um, basically, in the insurance world, moral hazard arises when the person covered by the insurance has the ability to affect the magnitude and the probability of the payout. So I'm going to give a, an example here that will start in the moral hazard and then we'll eventually sort of be able to convert it to adverse selection. Um, so I think you've probably all seen this before. Hopefully I can draw it properly. This is a normal distribution curve uh, that you'll see with marks for students. Uh, so say like 50% uh, and 100%. And this is number of students. Oops, students. Um, so what's going to happen is, within certain limits, uh, you know that students' marks are associated with or are a result of how much they study and how much they apply themselves. So if I walk into an undergrad class and I say, okay, I'm going to offer you bad grade insurance. So anyone that gets less than 80%, I will give $2,000 to as long as you buy my insurance. So basically what you're looking at here is let's say 80% is uh, uh, it's good enough, 80% is right here, it's 80%. Um, so anybody that is above this gets a $0 payout and anyone, sorry if I'm on the wrong side there, but you get the idea, gets a $2,000 payout over here. So these students um, would study a certain amount, uh, but you can see probably that anyone that's in this area that would have studied without the insurance here, I've probably affected their study habits if they have bought the insurance. All of a sudden, the people that were getting you know 81 and 82, all of a sudden they start they start moving over here to get there, and they sort of don't study as hard, and I change their habits, and they get their two thousand dollar payout. This is sort of a problem in the insurance world, uh, why certain types of insurance don't exist. Because at the end of the year, I've affected their sort of behavior, and so the payout is higher than I expected. I don't get this normal, nice, normal distribution curve. It sort of gets warped a bit, uh, and I, my payout is higher. So the next year, I have to either increase my, my premiums or how much they pay or the price, or I have to decrease how much I pay out, or I have to move the, the target around. So them hiding the fact of how much they study and the fact that I can't like monitor them, that is the hidden, uh, hidden action that sort of brings about the moral hazard. Now, with this same example, 
we want to talk about adverse selection. So let's say we have these exact same students, but they've all, they're all perfectly honest. So what they're all going to do is they're all going to study as hard as they can, no matter what. Now, I don't know these students, so I don't know where they would normally lie on this distribution curve. But they do. They know, like you know as a student, pretty much where you're going to end up. So if I offer this insurance, I say, I'll give you $2,000 if you're going to be less than 80. Who are the first people that are going to be in line to buy it? Obviously, it's going to be these people down here. And then these people are going to, you know, these people will buy. Now, when you start getting into this area, maybe they'll buy, maybe they won't. But these people are not, aren't going to buy the insurance. They know. But in my mind, in my sort of calculations, this is the distribution. But what's going to happen, basically, instead of getting this nice curve like this, I'm going to end up with a curve that goes like this. And these people are not buying. So now I just have this little section, so all my calculations get thrown off. And you can see that the same thing occurs. I adjust my price, I adjust my payouts, but it's always the people that need it the most, and that is the adverse selection. It's the tendency of the people that need a safety net the most to seek it out. This is the same problem that you're going to run into with um, people with pre-existing conditions trying to get health insurance. I mean, if they can hide the fact that they have this condition to get in and get the insurance, then it's good for them. But for the insurance company, that is the problem of adverse selection. So that hidden information we've seen, that's the problem of adverse selection. Um, over here we have the hidden action that is the problem of uh, moral hazard, that causes moral hazard. And all of that is a problem of asymmetric information. Thanks for watching.